What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into this week of August in 2019. We're also going to be breaking down the overall markets very quickly, taking a look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones to see what has the market been up to over these past couple of days, because for those of you all that have been following the channel, you know that I have been posting many market update and trading update videos due to me being in Greece, guys. I've been in Greece, so the content has been a bit irregular. I haven't been able to post daily throughout the week, so there are some things that I want to talk to you guys about, some technical points here on these charts that I want to share with you guys and news through my personal perspective that I just simply want to talk about. So we'll get into that first, then we'll talk about the list of stocks and ETFs that I do have here on on my piece of paper. So without further ado, guys, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and let's get right into it, guys. So the S&P 500 closed on Friday at 2932.05. It was down $21.51, down 0.73%. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but there is a minority out there that probably don't know, Donald Trump slapped 10% tariffs on $300 billion worth of Chinese goods this past Thursday. We also got a 25 basis point rate cut, which we all knew, most of us knew, was going to happen here at the end of July. We got that, and the markets actually sold the news, which I actually did talk about a couple of weeks ago, for those of you guys that remember, you know, the market was heavily pricing in that rate cut, and I actually had a feeling leading up to it that once the rate cut was going to come, because again, we, we knew it was going to come. Let's be honest, guys. We knew it was going to come. The Fed was, was hinting towards it. Trump really wanted the rate cut, and once it came, you know, the markets dropped, right? That sometimes happens. It's called um, buy, uh, crap, what's the saying now off the top of my head? It's called buy the news, or, or rather or buy the rumor, sell the news, or something like that. Comment down below. I'm forgetting off the top of my head what that quote is, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And that ended up happening, right? The market sold the news, right? Or whatever, right? And if we go to the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see the markets were kind of flat. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this past week, we got the rate cut, we dumped, we started to rally the next day, and then boom, that news came out, the 10% tariff, the market dropped from 30.10 all the way down to 29.45 in the matter of a couple of hours here. That's insane, right? And then the market tanked the next day all the way down to 29.14. That's about a 100 point drop in the matter of a day, which is about a 3.3% drop. Again, that's insane, guys. And for those of you guys that have been following excuse me, the trade war, you know, the back and forth from Trump, China, the presidents, you know, all the stuff that's been going on. If you've been following it over the past year at this point, you know that every single time that Trump slaps tariffs or China retaliates, the markets dump, guys. It's literally like Trump announces it, right, announces the tariffs, the markets drop like that. It's it's like a blink of an eye. And you guys can see what I'm talking about. Take a look at these red candlesticks. These are panic selling candlesticks. You see how quick that goes down, guys? This literally happened in the matter of 30 minutes, the market dropped like 1%, 2%. That's insane, right? And if we take a look on the 184-hour chart very quickly, you guys can see that the markets at this point, you know, they've corrected about 3 4% from that peak all-time high at 3027, and now we're trading at a very critical spot on top of the 180 simple moving average support support, which is this yellow line. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, you know, this is a time to, to buy the dip, right? It's, it's a time to buy the dip, right? And I'm thinking, me personally, I don't honestly think it's time to buy the dip quite yet, because this news about the tariffs, it's really fresh. This happened on Thursday, right? I think the market can still negatively you know, I think that this could still negatively impact the market, honestly, heading into this week. And if we were to break this level, you know, the 180 SMA support, if we were to break that, that's a very, very critical break. You know, that's a very critical break, right? You know, at that point, we could be going down maybe to 2885. And if I pull out my drawing tools very quickly, you'll guys be able to see, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. You know, we may be going down to 2890, right? That's a level that I'm seeing here. 
here. 2850, that's another very strong level that I'm seeing here. You know, there is room to drop here, although the RSI is showing that we are oversold, right? And, and a lot of the times, guys, you know, I don't rely on one indicator. Just because the RSI is telling me that it's oversold, I'm not going to be buying the dip, right? Because when these when these new when these um you know when the news comes out that there's tariffs, trade war, sometimes technicals, they don't matter at that point, right? The market will sell aggressively no matter what the technicals say. So that's why I'm really not paying attention to the RSI at this point because the negative news is still fresh. So if we break that, guys, 180 SMA, we may be going down 2890, we may be going down 2850. And honestly, we are in need of a correction at this point in the stock market, right? We got a correction a couple months ago. If we go back here and look, from uh, you know 29.50 down to about 27.30, that was about a seven percent correction. You know, if we do see something similar, you know, if we drop down to 28.40 from the peak, that would be another six percent correction, right? And corrections, they're very healthy. Everything that goes up, you need to see some form of correction, some form of healthy pullback, because not everything's going to go up infinitely, right? Not everything's going to continue to go up no matter what. There's going to be points where we correct, and this could be the start of another correction and the support levels that I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, 29 or 2890, 2850, those are the ones that I'm watching here on the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest publicly traded US companies. So if we go to the Nasdaq very quickly, guys, this one got hit pretty aggressively. This one actually already broke the simple moving average support on the 184 hour chart, which is not too good of a sign here. This one's showing a bit of a technical, um, you know, a very bad technical, um, you know, break here after we broke that level. And now some levels that I'm watching are 7550. You know, we could be selling off there. You guys can see back in March, that was a resistance at 7550. Once we break a resistance, it becomes a new support. You know, back in May and also back in June, that was all, you know, those were also resistance levels. So this is a very strong new support for the NASDAQ. And notice how the RSI is very oversold. But again, Technicals, when news come out, you know, when when there's negative news in the market, rate cuts, or not, not rate cuts, uh, tariffs, right, trade war, sometimes, you know, technicals and, uh, you know, indicators, they go out the window, right? But anyway, you know, 75.50, that's a support that I'm watching. If we take a look at the five-day, five-minute, we can see the performance. You guys can see here, you know, rate cut, or not the rate cut. Why do I keep saying rate cut? Tariffs. Tariffs came out, 8000 we dumped crazily all the way down to 7780 guys and we ended up going all the way down to 7650 so this one got hit a lot harder than the S&P down about 4.36% in the matter of that one or two day span there and if we go over here to the Dow Jones industrial average you guys can see this one was down 98 bucks on Friday down 0.37% when the uh, the tariffs came out you know 27200 or rather 27100 is where we were we sold off all the way down to about 26,249, which is about a seven or like an 800, 900 point haircut on the Dow Jones. About a 3.3, 3.2% drop on this particular index. And if we go to the 184 hour chart to break down some technicals here, just like the S&P guys, um, the Dow is actually maintaining that 180 SMA support on the 184 hour chart. So I'd take a look and see: Are we going to hold this? Are we going to blow through the floor of that, you know, and start to test previous supports, which at this point, if we take a look, you know, we can see, um, you know, 26,250, that's a level I'm watching, you know, 26, uh, 26,000 flat, that's another level I'm watching, we may be testing these points this upcoming week, and of course, if we go down a bit lower, we have 25,850, we have, let's see, we have about 25,500, these are all levels that are up and coming at this point, if the, uh, you know, if the sell-off continues, and if we take a look, back in May, when we had that sell-off, we went from about 26, uh, what was that, 20, 26, 500, all the way down to about 24, 700, which was about a 6, 7% haircut in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. At this point, we're down about 3, 4%. So if we see a similar drop, that may be putting us down here to about 25, 800, maybe even lower to about, let's say, 25, 
500. So that's a quick little, um, you know, market update here. What's been going on, you know, in the in the past couple of days and weeks here in the markets? We got the rate cut. We got tariffs. Now, if China retaliates, guys, this is something that could very well happen. They've retaliated before. If this happens again, the markets can take another hit. So be careful. I'm personally very cautious right now in what I'm trading. I'm looking at some stocks, but mostly, guys, I'm watching these, um, you know, market ETFs that I have here, and we'll get into that right now, guys. But before we get into that, actually, let's talk about that one stock, which is Disney. Disney, at this point, they are reporting earnings this upcoming week, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are. On the 6th of um, August, which is Tuesday, guys. So Disney at this point, just like the entire market, it's taken a haircut from 147 down to about 141. And if we take a look on a percentage basis here, that's a 4% haircut. And depending on what their earnings are, how the market is this upcoming week, this can fluctuate Disney heavily, right? It can fluctuate Disney to the upside if the earnings are good. And if the market is running down red again, 2-3% in a day, even if the earnings are good, Disney could very well continue to sell off. But let's say Disney doesn't sell off here. Let's say Disney holds this 180 SMA support. This could potentially be a dip buy here, right? And me personally, I'm going to wait until most likely Wednesday at this point to potentially trade Disney because I like buying stocks or at least, you know, buying into these um, trades after, you know, they report earnings. I don't like gambling on earnings. I like seeing how the guidance is, what the earnings actually were before hopping into a stock. But let's say again, earnings are positive. Let's say miraculously the markets do recover this week, which honestly, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really you know, thinking that's going to happen at this point, I would say there's like, if I were to put a, a percentage chance, I'd be like 30% chance markets recover this week, 70% chance we continue to sell off. But let's say 30% chance we bounce back, coupled with a good earnings on Disney, this could be a very good dip buy with about, again, about a four or five, and eh, more like a 4%, uh, you know, potential for profit back up to 147. So Disney at this point could be a dip buy, but again, if the markets tank, this could very well tank Disney down um, along with the markets, right? So let's talk about some of these market ETFs very quickly because again, these are what I'm focusing on in the volatile times that we are in. And I've focused on these for months in the past while we were in volatile times before. And starting off, let's talk about TVIX. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is one of my go-to plays when A, volatility is up and B, when the markets are aggressively selling off. And TVIX, this trade is based upon the VIX. VIX is VIX. For those of you guys that don't know, this is the volatility index. And now that we're on this topic of the VIX, guys, take a look at how the VIX performed. It nearly doubled. If we go to the 10-day chart, you guys can see it. It went from $11 up to $20 in the matter of a couple of trading days. That is insane, right? And you'd think to yourself, TVIX did crazy. Well, you're right. It went from $12 up to about $19. We're on the pullback right now at about $17. 65. So let's say the markets get rocky. Let's say there's more volatility Monday heading into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for this whole upcoming week. This could be a very good play. Let's say the VIX touches 20 bucks again because it did on Friday. Let's say we pop back up, maybe get $21, $22, a lot of volatility. TVIX could be up 10, 20, 30, 40% in the matter of a week. And you may be asking yourself, does that actually happen? Does TVIX go up that much? Guys, if you've been paying, a TV, or paying attention to TVIX over the past month, or not month, this was about two, three months ago, actually, you saw that in one day, it went up 40%. Four zero. Yes, you heard me right. 40%. TVIX went up 40% in one day. So yes, it can go up 10, 20%, 30% in the matter of a week. And that is why I see insane potential in TVIX this week. Because again, let's say China retaliates, markets get rocky. Trump sends a tweet. Let's say he sends a tweet about something. You know, we all know how sensitive the market is to Trump and Trump's Twitter. This could end up dropping the markets heavily, right? So TVIX, 
I'm watching it, right? $17 we are at right now, up to 19 bucks. That's an 8 9% margin of profit. And of course, like I said, if the markets drop again, the VIX goes to 20, 25, we get volatility. This can go up even more, guys, to 20, 25, maybe even $30 per share. So SQQQ, this is another one that I'm watching, right? And for those of you guys that are long-term viewers of this channel, you know that SQQQ is another one of my go-to ETFs whenever the market is selling off. And this one in particular trades based upon the NASDAQ, right? The NASDAQ. Whenever the NASDAQ is selling off, this one's going up at a 3x rate. So this is a 3x leveraged ETF, right? So let's say the NASDAQ goes down 2% one day. The SQQQ ETF is going to be up 6%, right? So you guys can see we were up 4.6% this past Friday. The NASDAQ was down about 1.2%. And if you do the math, it's roughly what, you know, uh, you know, if you do the math, here 1.2 times 3 that's roughly what you know the uh, SQQQ ETF was up it's not exactly right it's not exactly but it's roughly so again the NASDAQ I'm sure a lot of you guys know this but when there's volatility in the markets when stocks are dropping tech usually gets hit pretty hard and the NASDAQ itself dumps more than the S&P and the Dow which is why I really like SQQQ because it'll go up the most right because if the NASDAQ's dumping the most, that means SQQQ is going to be going up the most compared to some of these other market ETFs that I trade, that trade based upon, let's say, the S&P or the Dow Jones. So NASDAQ, guys, again, we dropped about 6% or like 4 or 5% from the peak now. When you guys saw the S&P and the Dow were down about 3 4%. So you guys can see that the NASDAQ did sell off more over the past couple of days, which proves my point, right? So if we go back to the SQQQ ETF, at this point, we're breaking out of the 180 SMA resistance. That's very good. If we get more volatility, NASDAQ tech sells off. This can go flying, right? So another one that I want to talk about, which rebounded very aggressively and I'm pissed at myself that I missed this move because I was watching it, guys. It is JNUG, guys. And JNUG is another ETF that trades based upon gold that goes up whenever gold is going up. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen gold over the past couple of days. It bounced right off the 180 SMA at 14.13 after that little haircut. Once August started, it flew all the way up to 14.61. And at this point, we are getting a bit overbought here. And if we draw out out some levels of um, resistance and support right now, new levels, we can see 1450 is a strong old resistance. Now, since it's an old resistance and we broke out of it, we'd want to see it hold that as a new support. So that's kind of what I'm watching here. You know, if we get that pullback, which honestly at this point, we're already at 1450. So if we hold this and maybe start popping back up to the 1460-ish level, this could be a point where gold could potentially break out again. But let's say we break 1450 we may be selling off to let's say 1440 which at that point the RSI would come down to a healthier level and JNUG would honestly open up even more margin of profit so I'd actually rather see that happen so I could get a better um, you know entry point on JNUG we could potentially get in let's say at 75 maybe 73 and if we get lucky maybe back down to the low 70s again where we were this past week where I missed the opportunity, guys, which again, I'm pissed at myself, but you can't get all of the opportunities out there. That's just impossible, right? You can't get in every single play, right? That's again, just impossible. But JNUG, it's worth watching gold in these markets, you know, as the markets have been selling off, volatile trade war, rate cuts, people are scared of the recession, the economy slowing down, gold has been flying up. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have been seeing that if you've been doing your analysis and very quickly for those of you guys that haven't seen that you know gold has gone literally from April 1269 all the way up to 1460 in the matter of three four months so that's a 200 something point um, pop or about like a 190 190 point pop which is a very strong move in terms of gold because honestly guys gold 
a lot of people don't even consider gold an investment, right? It was up 13% since that drop in April. You know, a lot of people don't consider gold as an investment. They see it as a hedge, you know, against the dollar, right? You know, a very kind of like a safe haven place to put your money in rocky times. Gold typically holds its value over time, and a lot of people feel safe putting their money in gold. But me personally, I actually don't really own any physical gold, to be completely honest with you guys. But I'm thinking about maybe buying some, uh, you know, physical gold here and uh, maybe sharing it with you guys, doing an unboxing. That's something that I'm thinking about here over these next couple of weeks. You know, maybe, right? Maybe we'll see. And uh, of course, I'll share that with you guys. So looking at my sheet here, I do have a couple more here. Microsoft, this is another one that kind of relies on the overall market. If the market dumps, this one could very well dump as well. And let's say the markets, re uh, they bounce, they rebound that 30% chance that I gave you guys let's say that does end up happening you know this could be a perfect dip buy on microsoft and you guys can see here microsoft honestly you know, based off just the naked eye here, I don't think this is sold off as much as some of the other stocks during the periods of sell-off in the markets. And for those of you guys that don't know what I'm saying, again, we got that market sell-off in May, right? We got that dump and Microsoft seems like it wasn't hit that hard. We got another dump back in December. It was hit decently hard, but there are a lot of other stocks that were down more than the 15% that Microsoft was down. So typically Microsoft, I think hold its value a bit more than some of these other tech stocks during some periods of time where the markets are selling off. So let's say we miraculously hold this 180 SMA tomorrow. This could be a point in time where we're at a 4% dip buy from the all-time highs at $141.88, right? We got the earnings report already. Off the top of my head, I forget what they actually did. You can see, okay, they beat on earnings, 124 estimated EPS, 137 actual that's very good. It did very, ah, did it do well that day? Yeah, it did well that day. You know, it hit all time highs again after that, shortly after the earnings. But then again, the markets dumped, took Microsoft down with it. Now we're holding that spot. So this could be a point where we pop, and I'm watching that for Microsoft. And if we go down to about or to the 20 day, one hour chart very quickly, you guys can see the choppiness of this stock at this point. So choppy on the 20 day, one hour chart. It's crazy. We reported earnings, popped, sold off the next day, popped to the all time high that I talked to you guys about the markets dumped, took Microsoft down, we popped up the next day, or yeah, yeah, it popped up the next day, sold off aggressively, so just keep an eye, guys, if we break this 50 SMA on the 20-day one hour, we could be breaking out at this point, and again, that heavily relies on whether or not the overall markets recover, so this stock that I'm going to talk about right now, this is one that actually one of our Discord members ended up calling out, a very active Discord member, and that's ticker symbol DF. And I'm typically not trading um, penny stocks. You guys that have been following the channel, you know that I like large cap stocks. But whenever somebody calls out a stock, I like covering it on the channel, giving my little two cents about it. And this is one that was called out, and I'm going to give my two cents about it. So let's get right into it, guys. So DF, Dean Foods, honestly, I don't know anything about this company, right? You can see clearly on the 184 hour chart, the six month chart, this stock has just been dumping every single week, right? Every single month, every earnings report, it seems like it's been dumping afterwards. The 180 SMA, <clears throat> the 50 SMA here, the green and yellow line, they've obviously been resistances, right? We've been making lower lows, lower highs, just simply downtrending, right? But now, it seems like we found a bottom at about 87 cents. We're starting to rather hold the 50 SMA as a support instead of being rejected at it as a resistance. And now we're actually breaking out of the 180 SMA resistance, which is a very, very good sign of a potential breakout here. Notice how we are reporting earnings here on the 6th, which is this Tuesday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. So this could heavily fluctuate the stock, right? And again, the previous couple of earnings reports, it seems like we've been dumping after every single one, right? We, we dumped after this one. We dumped after this one. 
you know, if we go back to the yearly chart, let's see what's been going on um, on the yearly chart. You guys can see it's just been heavily downtrending over the past year as well. So this earnings report, in my opinion, right, I, again, I don't know what the projected earnings is, but this is definitely going to fluctuate the stock. So at this point, if we report earnings and let's say we pull back and maybe hold that 180 SMA, this could be a point in time where we retest it as a support and maybe break out again. But let's say, you know, the earnings are negative. Let's say we break the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA support and we start to trend down again. This could just simply be the continuation of the downtrend that we've been on. So in my opinion, you know, this is a very dangerous stock to be playing with, right? If you have, you know, a lot of research built into this, you think the earnings are going to be very, very good. You know, you have maybe a, a, an outlook of about a couple months, a year, two years on this company. You know, this could be a very good opportunity to hop in. But again, me, I don't have that outlook right now. Overall, the trend, what I'm seeing, it's a bit negative at this point. You know, over the past year, we've been downtrending. And that doesn't mean that the company is going to go bankrupt. It doesn't mean that the company is just going to continue to downtrend. But what I'm seeing based on the previous data leads me to believe that you know, this is a dangerous stock to be playing with, right? And, 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 you know, a lot of the penny stocks are out there. A lot of the stocks under $5, $3, whatever you consider a penny stock, a lot of them are very dangerous. So, you know, I'd personally wait and see, especially with the penny stock, you know, what are they going to do, you know, after earnings? How's the guidance? What are the EPS numbers? What are the revenue? You know, how's everything looking? How's the stock reacting? How's the market reacting, you know, after earnings before even hopping in? You guys can see again the RSI right now you know is a bit overbought so if we do get that pullback the retest maybe that bullish cross good earnings you know this could end up you know pumping the stock up but overall on the one year one day chart we can see that even if it does pop up on the 184 hour chart, even if we do break out on the one year chart, we can still see we're extremely overbought and we're overall trending below the yearly 180 SMA here, which is a bit worrisome. If we were breaking out of this level, I think that would be pretty, pretty attractive, but we're not getting that quite yet. And me personally, <clears throat> me personally, guys, you know, I'm not looking to trade this, but again, I broke it down for a subscriber, a very active Discord member. And I do that for a lot of you guys that do end up calling out stocks. So that's kind of my two cents on um, DF at this point. And honestly, guys, those are just the stocks and ETFs that I'm watching this week. I'm being very, very cautious with stocks, especially stocks, because the market can dump, right? And that will take down stocks. A lot of the large cap stocks that I typically trade, you know, I'm mostly watching these market ETFs, right? TVIX, like I mentioned, SQQQ, you know, SPX, not SPXL, SPXS, if you guys want to trade um, an ETF that trades on the S&P 500, this one goes up whenever the S&P is selling off. So if the markets dump and you want to trade one on the SPX, this could be one to play, right? Another, you know, uh, volatility one to be watching is UVXY. This one goes up. It's kind of like TVIX when the markets are selling off and when the VIX, the volatility index, is going up. So those are a couple that I am watching this upcoming week, guys. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Again, it really supports me and I really appreciate all of you guys out there that do that. And if you want to see further content from me, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Let me know what do you guys think about the markets this week. What are your thoughts on everything? Are we going to sell off? Are stocks going to rebound? Did you buy the dip? I would love to know what you guys have to think. So again, I really appreciate all of you guys taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. If you want to be further connected with our community, the Strive Smart Discord, Strive Smart Facebook, my personal Instagram, all of those are linked down below. Good luck this week. I hope you all kill it. Peace out.